Yeah, welcome everyone. Understanding the trap is the title of this video. This is to explore what the trap really is. What's the game here? Many people have said that the trap is a physical trap by some kind of force, negative force. And while there is some relative truth to this, I think that we need to look more deeply to recognize what is the real source of the trap. Because if we recognize what the real source of the trap is, we're also going to recognize what the solution is. If we are looking in the wrong place for the solution, then we are never going to come to a solution. So the trap has been spoken about as a system, a way of life. Many people feel trapped in modern society. They feel that they are tied to a job, to work, to certain rules, certain conditionings, certain norms of society. So they feel very trapped, very claustrophobic. I know for many people, I know even certainly for myself, many, many years ago, this was the sense. All throughout my life was a sense that something was not quite right. Not quite right with the world, with society, what people believe, how people function. There was this kind of sense that it shouldn't be like this. And why do people believe that it should be like this? But that was to see as well that underneath the way that the society was, there was a certain mentality, a certain belief, beliefs. And what I could see is that people were acting out only what they were believing, only what they had taken on, the conditioning, the programming, false belief, an assumption. They had assumed certain things to be true about themselves and life, in which then their actions and their decisions were coming from that. So if we look at everybody's life, your own, other people's, everything that you do comes from how you perceive things, what you believe. Now, my approach is to not believe anything. My approach is to go beyond all beliefs. Because a belief is ultimately a lie. A belief cannot be reality, cannot be what is, cannot be truth. A belief is just a thought, it's just an assumption, it's just a certain perception on something, limited. Beyond all of that, there is reality, there is truth. So my approach, what I realized is that belief, all beliefs have to go. We have to go beyond all belief. Even in the word itself, belief, it says be, lie. Take the F off the end. You have be, lie. So a belief is a lie. And when we are operating through a belief, we are being a lie. 
It's a distortion. It's like a, a mirror that is dusty. If the mirror is dusty, we cannot see our true reflection, which is the same as life itself. The truth, reality, the isness. So we have to clean the mirror. And then there is no distortion anymore. Now we can see things clearly. So belief is like this. Belief is a distortion. So what I saw is that the trap was not so much a physical system, a certain way of life. It was the mentality underneath that. It wasn't a physical system as such. It was the mentality that perpetuates that physical system. So one thing that we come to realize in realization as we start to know ourselves more deeply is we start to see the chain of events of how things manifest. An action is not just an action. This is what the word karma means in Sanskrit, action. Before an action, there is a thought. A thought precedes an action, an intent. And what can be determining that is the belief underneath it, what you believe to be true. Deeper even than the belief is the sense of identification, the sense of who you think you are, which is also a belief. So really, all beliefs, including identification, is really at the very core of all of your intent, which then determines the decisions and the actions that are then taken, and then what is manifest. So the society, what we see is only a manifestation of what people are collectively believing, intending, which is then leading to their decisions and then their actions. So as we start to know ourselves more deeply, we understand our own mind. We can see it clearly. As the saying goes, know yourself to know others. As you know yourself more clearly, you know others. Because once you understand the way that this mind functions, once you know yourself from the gross to the subtle, well, now you know everybody. There may be some differences on the surface, but underneath the mechanics are the same. The mechanics of the mind and the way that the body and mind function are the same. The mechanics of conditioning, programming, belief are the same. So you start to see that the very source of our whole society, our whole way of life, this system, is coming from the mind. It's like society perpetuates and creates these kind of loops, like a, a feedback loop. So because of this mentality that's been going on for thousands of years by human beings, the human mind, the conditioned mind, belief, being a believer, rather than being an explorer. You can see that what's happened is that a, a system has been created which then mimics and feeds back what people believe, what people expect, how people act, how people behave. And so then you get these traps 
that arise, which only feedback. They are a way in which a person falls into that trap because of what they are believing. And then they get kind of stuck in these, these cul-de-sacs. And that's a cycle, right? All of the religions have been saying this in different ways. Buddhism calling it the cycle of life, death, and rebirth, samsara. The Hindus call it maya, the great illusion. The Gnostics talking about the demiurge. The Christians talking about salvation. They're all talking about becoming free, liberated from this cycle, from this trap. Now, if we just think that the trap is out there, if we think it is objective in nature, then what's going to happen is you're going to think that really there is no way out. Or if there is a way out, you're going to think that you're going to have to do something out there, what you perceive as out there. You're going to have to change something out there so that you can be free within. And this is part of the, the whole trap anyway, right? This is what a spiritual explorer awakens out of. They start to see that their whole life is not a product of an outside world imposing it upon you so much as it is about how you have been perceiving things and what you've been believing. That's what was primary. This is why you can have people that are operating in the world freely. They feel free, and yet they're side by side with other people that don't feel free. Because it's not objective in nature. The trap is not objective. This is the great illusion, the great trick. It's to get you to think that the trap is objective. That it is a system. That it is a certain force. That there is something there that is holding you there in place. Now, if you believe that, then there's no way out. Basically, you are at the whim of that system, of that force, of the world, life. But if we look deeper, that's not true. Again, if you go back to that chain of events, you see that it happened at the source, the trap is happening at the source of what is then determining the decisions, the actions, which is perpetuating the way that society is. So there must be a looking deeper. But what happens is it creates this feedback loop in which then it seems like there are traps out there which catch you like a, a mouse that is tempted by some bait, right? The mouse only gets trapped because it is tempted by the bait. There is bait waiting for it. The fish only gets caught because it is tempted by the bait. It's the oldest trick in the book. But in a sense, the being that gets caught it is really upon them more than it is on the one that is laying the trap. And I know that is probably hard to, to digest that, to accept that. But it's like someone putting out a, a, a stall, right? Someone puts out a stall and they're telling you, this food is poisonous. Eat at your own risk. And then you go along and you eat. 
Now you may say, well, there are many things that you're not told are a trap. But that is down to each individual's level of consciousness. If somebody is unconscious, meaning they're lost in their mind and they're not aware of how things really function, they're not aware of truth, of who they are, of what is good and what is bad, or what we could say, what is in alignment and what is not in alignment. If someone is not aware of that, and then they fall into that trap, then that is happening because of their unawareness. That is happening because of their programming. So in a sense, when we really look at it, there's no one really to blame as such. It's all taking place because of unconsciousness. Now, this is actually empowering to realize this. If you could blame somebody, that would actually be disempowering. Because now you're putting the solution in somebody else's hands. Also, I'm not saying to blame yourself. Because nobody would want to trap themselves, right? <laughs> nobody of sound mind, of, of being conscious, would want to trap themselves or would trap themselves. So there's something deeper that's happening that's trapping people. And it happens within the mind. And this is why I have sometimes referred to it as the mind matrix. Many people have the idea that the matrix is out there. It's the system. And again, in a sense, there is some truth to that. But that system comes from the mind matrix first. And it's the mind matrix that perpetuates it. For example, a corporation that is a big corporation successful is only successful because they have customers that buy their products. If the customers stop buying their products, what would happen to the corporation? It would disappear. The same is true if you extrapolate that same example now for the whole of society. Everything, the entertainment industry, the legal system, money, corporations, government, everything. If you extrapolate that same example out, it's all a manifestation of what the collective is wanting whether consciously or unconsciously, whether they know it or not. The moment that the masses don't want something, then there would not be a market for it and it would go away, it would cease. So the masses, because they don't realize this, they perpetuate it through their conditioning. They're not to blame because they're not conscious. The nature of consciousness is such that if you're not aware of something, you can't be responsible for it. It is only when you become aware of something, now you have a choice. Now you can be responsible, which is the ability to respond. So most people can't respond because they're not aware. They're unconscious. They're lost in their unconscious mind, their thought process, which is conditioned. They think that's who they are. This is why the solution is to awaken beyond the mind. This is why the solution is to recognize what we really are, to recognize truth, to see through these false beliefs. Now we can start to make our way out of the trap. If we don't do that, then all that happens is we perpetuate. 
because we have the same behaviors, take the same actions, make the same decisions from that programming, from those beliefs, from the intent that comes from those beliefs. So then things just continue. It's like a Groundhog Day, perpetual Groundhog Day. So the more conscious that one becomes, the greater ability you have to respond to life, to respond differently, rather than to react. Reaction comes from being a believer. Reaction comes from the conditioning, the programming beliefs of the mind. Comes from that false identity, from being asleep in the mind. This is why it has been spoken about as waking up. We've got to wake up. Every being must awaken. As the individuals awaken more and more, as has been happening, naturally, the collective, it rubs off on the collective. The collective is awakening more and more. And it is a kind of race in terms of then what you see as the way of life that then manifests itself. Of course, the more people awaken individually, in greater and greater numbers, that then affects what we start to see in the collective, the way of life. So right now on the planet, in this next seven years or so, 7, 12, 13, 15 years, especially, there's going to be huge, dramatic changes, more than likely, that's going to occur. And what will determine what we see is people's level of consciousness, how awake they are, or how asleep they are. And so, Again, this comes by understanding what the trap is. It reminds me of a, a story of the monkey that was caught by the by the poacher. And what the poacher did is he he put a uh, a banana inside this container. And when the monkey put its hand inside, the, the container entry point was too narrow for the monkey to be able to pull out its hand with the banana. And so he laid this trap and the monkey came. The monkey put its hand in, grabbed the banana, and it tried to pull the banana, but it got stuck. And the poacher is coming. He now knows the, the monkey is caught, so he's coming to get the monkey. And the monkey's thrashing around trying to get its hand out. But it won't let go of the banana. If it just let go of the banana, if it just can let go, then it can pull free. But it won't let go. And so it gets caught. And so the moral of the story, of course, is that being trapped is because we are not letting go of something. We are trapped because we want something. We want to keep something. We're like, no, I want this. And so then we get trapped by that thing. So whatever you cannot let go of becomes your trap, becomes your chain. Because you're attached to it. You're clinging to it. And that is coming because in some way you're identified with it. You think it's part of who you are and you think it's something that you need to be happy. And so what self-realization is saying and liberation is that everything that we could ever want is actually already our true nature. 
But when we cling, when we misidentify who we are, what happens is that we are blocking that true nature from being felt. What if all of the joy and the happiness and the bliss that you go seeking in the world is actually already within you right now? What if you already have it? What if you already have everything that you could ever want right now within you? The source of everything, the source of abundance, the source of love, the source of joy, the source of freedom, of wisdom, everything. What if absolutely everything is already your true nature? And you could have it if you would just let go of attaching to something or identifying with something. Well, that's what I am suggesting here. That's what self-realization liberation is suggesting. It's saying that you are already that, but you just must come to realize it. And you must come to live as that, to be that. And part of that comes from not just realizing what you are, but also realizing what you are not. And it's when you realize what you are not that you begin to let these things go. It's only because you believe something to be true and you think you need something that you then cling to those things which are not what you are and which are only blocking you which are not serving you. And so what's being suggested is that that is the trap. If you extrapolate that into all of your life and you think about what motivates you in life, you think about what are you attached to? What are you clinging to? What are you identified with? If you're honest with yourself, and you can assess that, well, now you know what to work on. Now you know what to release, what to let go of, what to question. To question whether it is true or not, to question whether you do really need it or not. These are your indicators. So what if... As Meister Eckhart said, the great mystic, paraphrasing him right now, but what if what we call demons and challenges are really angels that are trying to free you from the world? I mean, this is a completely different way to look at things, right? You can create an enemy out there. You can perceive it in that way. But there will be a limitation to that. Because you're still then opposing something and you're still blaming something and you're still saying that you're controlled by something. But what if you see it in a different way? What if you see that the demons and the challenges are really there to free you. And what if you use them in that way? If you used it to free you, what are they freeing you from? They're freeing you from attachment, false identity, and fear. The Buddha said that the secret of life is to have no fear. You become fearless when you recognize what you really are because you see that there is nothing to fear. Fear is only when you think that you can be harmed in some way, when you think that something can be taken away, when you think that you can die. If you realize that you are eternal, forever, if you realize that you are forever full, that nothing can ever be taken away, and if you realize what the truth is, 
your true identity, then all of these obstacles fall away. And then the result, the consequence of that, is that you are free from the trap. But the trap no longer exists for you. You may look around and it seems like maybe there is a trap still. And other people seem to be experiencing as if they are trapped. But for you, there is no trap. You've found freedom. You've found liberation. But of course, this requires doing the necessary work, having this understanding, having the understanding. To put it into context, only so that then you can do the right things, do the necessary things to set yourself free. You know, it is like the analogy of the man that is in prison. First, he must know he's in a prison. First, he must know he is trapped. Because if he doesn't admit that he's in a prison, that he's trapped, then he will never even try to break free. Most of the world, they don't admit that they're in a prison. Trapped in cycles. They're not aware of it or they're in denial of it. So they can't move forward. They can't break free because they're not even going to try because they think they're already free or they are trying to deny that they are not free. So the man in the prison, first he must recognize, I am not free. Then he can acquire a tool, the right tool, and he can begin to chip away at the prison wall every day, chipping away, chipping away, chipping away. And eventually, if he carries on, if he is persistent, doing the right things, eventually he makes it through to that wall. And then he comes out, and now he is confronted with a sewer. And he can see that at the end of the sewer, there is light, light at the end of the tunnel. But you must crawl through the filth. You must crawl through the shit. Right? This represents the shit <laughs> that each one of us has to work through. All that crap that has been created because of the false identification, the false beliefs. You got to work through that. You got to release it. See reality, your true nature beyond it. So then you must crawl through. Then the man crawls through the filth. And then he can make his way out into the light of freedom out of the prison. So this is what must be done. This is what's being suggested. The right things must be done. To have this understanding is key. But then to go about not just recognizing what you are, not just having a direct glimpse of that, a direct experience of that, because it is no good to hold on to any kind of concept of it. It is no good to say spirit or soul. Because those are just words. You must taste what you are directly. You must see it for yourself within your own authority. With the proper guidance or with the proper method. With the right inquiry, the right exploration. But then it is also important to be able to dispel everything that you are not. To see what you are not. All the false beliefs, the assumptions must go. They must be questioned, challenged. Am I sure of this? Am I really sure of this? Is it really true? Or is it false? Do I really need this thing to be happy? Is this who I am? As we question those things and we start to see that they are false, naturally we release. 
And as we release those things, what you will find is that more and more you are just being your real self. You're just being your real self established in that nature. And it is when you're established in that nature that you have found true inner freedom, true liberation. But not before then. 